Hey, how's it going guys? In this video, I'm going to show you how to use Salesforce REST API. If you've used Salesforce before, then you probably know uh, Salesforce has a list of available APIs that you can use. And here's a list of APIs that uh, we can use to connect to uh, Salesforce. And I'll be covering REST API, which is the most commonly used API type. And there are other APIs such as SOAP API, Connect REST API, Bulk API, which is another pretty popular API to run different operations in a large volume, and Metadata API, which is used to create uh, objects. I want to go into the Quick Starts prerequisites page under the REST API developer guide. All right, so if you uh, scroll to the Quick Start section, so here are the instructions guide you to how to uh, set up your REST API environment. But I feel like uh, the guide is missing a couple uh, really important steps, and which I'll cover in this video. All right, so first we need to create a Connect app. Next, we need to set up our authorization uh, portal. And I'll be using Python for this demonstration, but essentially the steps are going to be same, if not similar, for other programming languages as well. All right, so here I want to go into my Python script. All right, so I want to import my username and password. And the module should be credential. All right, so I want to go to step number one, and which is going to be create a connect app. Now going into my Salesforce page, I want to go to setup. On the left hand side, here let me zoom in a little bit more. On the left hand side, I want to go to build, create, then apps. Now on the apps page, I want to scroll down to connect app. Click on new. Now we need to give our app a name. And let's call this uh, Salesforce Connector. Then tap to populate the API name. Then we need to provide email. All right, so under the API enable OR settings section, we want to make sure that uh, this setting is enabled. Then for the callback URL, so going back to the documentation. All right, so if you don't have a callback URL, then we can uh, use localhost as a replacement. So I'm going to copy paste the URL, HTTPS localhost. Now under the available OR scopes uh, list, here we can give our app different types of permission. And since I intended to uh, use the app for my personal use, so I want to give this app for access. Then I add the scope to the select OR scopes uh, list. For everything else, I'm going to leave it as default. Then click on save. We're going to see this message. The changes can take up to 10 minutes to take effect. Click on continue to create the app. Now, if we look at the API enable OR settings section, we should now have the consumer key and the consumer secret uh, generator. Now copy the consumer key and make sure that you don't share uh, this two information with anyone else that you don't trust. Uh, because essentially those are kind of like your username and password, except that those are for apps. All right, so in my uh, Python script, I'm going to create two variables. This one's going to be consumer key. Then I want to review the secret. Okay, let me make the window a little bigger. And I'll copy the secret. And I'll assign the secret to a variable called consumer secret. All right, so this one more step that we need to take, and this is a pretty critical step that I didn't see is on the documentation. Now, click on Manage. We want to uh, change some settings. Now, here we want to click on Edit Policies. Now, under the OR Policies section, I want to change this setting to All Users May Self-Authorize. 
In form to approve certain users to be able to connect to this app, then you can choose the second option. But for now, I want to be able to allow other users to connect to this app. Now I want to go to IP relaxation. So the default set to enforce IP restrictions. And this means that you can only connect to the app only when your IP address is under the safe list. So if I'm using a laptop at an airport or a coffee shop, then you won't be able to connect to the app because uh, your IP address is not under the safe list. And I want to change the option to relax IP restrictions for activated devices. Now save the settings. Now we're ready to make the REST API code to acquire the access token. And we need to provide the access token every time we want to uh, make an API code to use any of the, uh, the REST API services. All right, so I want to go back to the documentation. And I want to go to, uh, this should be stat two, to be honest. And I want to go to set up authorization. All right, so here's an example of the API code that we can make to acquire the access token. And we go ahead and copy the code. All right, so if we look at the endpoint, this is going to be our domain name. And go ahead and create another variable called domain name. And I want to go back to my environment and copy the domain name. And assign the domain name to the domain name variable. Now we can make the API code to acquire the access token. All right, so because I'm using Python, let me import the requests library. And this is the library that I use to make a request call. All right, so let me create my requests library. And I'll create my variables. Now we need to make a post request to acquire the assets token and distribute requests. Now from the URL, it's going to be domain name plus this portion service or R2 token. And here I'm going to create a dictionary. And if we go back to the top, we need to set the grant type to password. Then we need to provide the consumer key to the client ID parameter or field. And client secret is going to be consumer secret. Then we need to provide our username and password. All right, so going back to the post request code, I'm going to name the output response access token. Then I'm going to assign the data object. Actually, let's name this to JSON data. I'll send the JSON data object to the data parameter. Now, if I go ahead and make the post request, if I print the status code, it's going to return 200. And 200 means that the API code is successful. So I can print reason to give us the information in print format. Now, if I print the JSON object, or the JSON output. And here's our access token. In form to know what types of things that you can do using REST API. So if we go to REST API developer guide, 
under the reference section. So we can do quite many things. We can uh, make a SQL query, which is going to be uh, this uh, endpoint. We can insert update the records. We can print uh, each object's metadata, and many more. And for this video, I just want to show you how to set up your environment and how to acquire the access token. And for the future videos, I'll show you how to automate different things using Salesforce REST API. All right, so here let me show you an example on what we can do with the uh, REST API. All right, so here let me insert nodes. Require access token. Oh, so here let me do this. I need to create a variable to store the access token. So I'll name the variable access token ID. And I want to check here, let's do this. If response access token status code is not is equals to 200. Then I want to create the access token ID variable. And I'll print message access token created. So for this example, I'm going to show you how to retrieve objects metadata. All right, so if we go to the reference page, let's do metadata. This should be another one. It will be this one, S object based information. If we look at the description, describes the individual metadata for the specific object. And this can also be used to create a new record for a given object. All right, so let's do this. So this is going to be a get request. And it's going to be domain name plus, let me grab the service name or the service component. Right, so we are using 53.0. So this can be any version that as long as the version supports the uh, operation. I'll name the output response as object. Now if I simply run this statement, and because I didn't provide the access token, If I print the reason property, it's going to print on authorize. And to authenticate, here I'm going to create a headers object. Inside the headers object, we need to supply the access token to the authorization property. And it's going to be bare space. And it's going to be access token ID. Now let me go ahead and create the access token ID variable. And since the default content type is set to JSON, so I'm going to simply provide the authorization property only. All right, so for headers, this is going to be headers. Now if I run the code block again, Insist that uh, not found. Oh, All right, so here I'm getting okay for the reason. Now, if I print response, it's option dot JSON. It's going to return the metadata version for every single object in my environment. 
So this is going to be everything I'm going to cover in this video. And hopefully you guys found this video useful. And as always, thank you guys for watching. I'll see you guys in the next video.